How is everyone today? Good? All right. Only a few things excite me more than seeing a local student finding a problem and fixing it. One who exemplifies this philosophy is Thomas Ma, a businessman, but one of very own, UIC's very own students. He is an exciting time for his business career podium, and today, Thomas will discuss some key points for people starting tech companies, how to overcome defeat, and use it as motivation. Now, please give a round of applause as we welcome to the stage, Thomas Ma. Thanks, Chris, for the kind words. Do you guys mind moving up before we begin? Move forward, please. Come on, guys, move closer to me, please. Thank you. Don't be shy, guys. We're almost bite. Yeah, we won't bite. Don't worry. Love to see you guys' faces. All right, thank you so much. First off, how's everyone doing today? Awesome, awesome. Well, thank you for taking time to come out. Um, as Chris said, my name is Thomas. I'm the founder of Career Podium, a startup based out of UIC. And you're probably wondering, why is a student here today? Well, that's a good question. It's because I'm here to share my story on how I was able to use failure as motivation. Before I begin, I have a question for you guys. How do you define failure? You right there. I'm here. You're here? That's awesome. You, sir? Uh, I feel like if you have a goal and you don't, then you meet what you were trying to meet and you fail. Yeah. Does anyone else have any input to share on how they define failure? All right, and that's okay. My second question is, how do you feel when you fail? Terrible. Terrible, yeah, and that's my point. Failure is a part of life. We can't avoid it. In order to succeed, we need to fail. Fail stands for first attempt in learning, and I hope that you guys will be inspired by my story. So my story. A year ago, I was a junior here at UIC seeking an internship, but I got turned down from every single firm that I applied for. And it wasn't because I was lazy. I applied to well over 50 firms. I had a different cover letter for every single firm that I applied for, and I worked hard. At least I thought I did. But I realized something important. On my resume, I didn't really stand out. And on this second slide, you're going to see the things that I use on my resume. So right there, this, the resume I was sending to all these employers. The first point, my 3.0 GPA, this to an employer obviously didn't stick out. But I realized something important. I had to change myself in order to be better because I didn't want to feel rejected again. And my next point is no leadership experience. Being the founder of Career Podium is the first time in my entire life that I've been a leader in some, anything. And why is that? Well, as a kid growing up, I was shy. And my family may not believe this, but um, in a large group, I didn't stand out. Anytime we were in a group, I would not say anything. I didn't want to raise my hand because I feared rejection. I figured, you know, if I made a mistake, people would think differently of me. And that's something I regret a lot because it held me back. But I realized that today. And my second point is not knowing what my passion was. While I was applying for all these internships, I was simply doing it for the sake of the experience. And that's not how it goes. So my story is my freshman year, I was pre-med or pre-pharmacy. I wanted to be a pharmacist because my aunt was a pharmacist and I saw that she made a great living. And I'm thinking like, yeah, I want to have a lot of money when I grow up. Second, the job's secure. So just in high school, I'm like, yeah, I'm going to be a pharmacist, guys. Going to college to all my family members. They're like, he's so smart, he's going to do it. And that's what I thought. First semester, killed it. Did really good. I'm like, all right, this dream's alive. But then came second semester and the start of my sophomore year. This is when I took OrgoChem, Bio 100, Calculus. And for once in my life, you know, like, I struggle really a lot. I spent a lot of nights in the library only to earn a C. And I figured, I can't do this forever because it's not right. I realized life is short and you have to do what you believe in or else it's not going to be fun. And 
one of my strengths throughout this experience was my work ethic. Even though I went through all these failures, my parents are the reason why I believe um, I have so much confidence and why I have a hard work ethic. They came here with nothing. My mom and dad, they came here because um, of the Vietnam War. Back then, they lived in a small home and they went through a lot of poverty. So this was the new opportunity. And when they came here, same deal. They had to work from the ground up. They shared a small room in the States with my grandpa and it just really inspires me because today I realize how important my parents are to me with their hard work. As a child, I was very fortunate. My sister and I were able to get everything that we wanted, but at that time I didn't realize how hard it is to actually make it. And back to my story. So how did I feel when I was rejected? Well, like that. So it was hard, exactly. Why is there a cat even, why is the cat there? Funny story is yesterday I attended a keynote by Alexis Ohanan, who's the co-founder of Reddit. And in his slide, he used like many cats to kind of portray how he was feeling. So I figured, why can't I put a cat in my slide? Because literally that's how I felt and I don't want to go through that feeling again. So what's next? Okay. Oh, not yet. But what, what happened is in the fall, I was studying abroad and I couldn't sit there just feeling sorry for myself. Having pity for yourself doesn't help you get up. Your friends may say, hey, it's okay. But in reality, you're still in the same position and you have to go out there and earn it. So what I did, well, not having an internship, I applied for Wendella Boats. A fraternity brother of mine mentioned that there was an opening and I was like, okay, I need something. I need to keep working. Can't just sit there. So I did, I was a deckhand. I worked Monday through Thursday from eight to five and that was the first time I had to work so many hours in a span of four days. I realized you know, I didn't want to wake up every morning feeling tired and going to work and be like, ah, oh, I wish I could stay in. So it taught me the true value of hard work because, like I said, life is short, so we have to take advantage. And then in the next experience, my mother's nail salon. It's very interesting. You wouldn't expect me to have any experience, but I decided why not because my mom's like, hey, we can use some help on the weekend. We're really busy. So I did. At first, it was just kind of like watching my mom do the day-to-day -day operation and assisting her with the marketing. But then one day, it was just really busy. And um, my mom's like, hey, I need your help. And I'm like, OK. So I walk over there. And she's like, hey, I want you to take her nail polish off on her feet. And I was like, uh, I don't know. It was like an old lady, and her feet was like, I don't know, she's not a feet person, so I was just like, okay, I'm going to take her off her nail polish, what's next? And she's like, you got to scrub her feet. I'm like, uh, all right, sure. But it ended up, throughout that summer, I ended up doing many manicures and pedicures just to help my mom out, but that was unexpected. And that's what I mean by failure. You don't really predict your path. You may do something different, but it's okay. So how did I improve? Well. That summer, I went on YouTube and I'm like, how do you massage feet? How do you massage hand? Because I want to excel in the things that I do, even if it was massaging feet. And then that summer, I learned an important lesson, which is how to interact with people. Because that summer, people would walk in, they were happy or angry, but I had to help them out. So my one story is one day, it was very hot, again it was packed, every chair was taken, and there's this angry lady. She's like, hey, I want to get my feet done. Like, why is it taking forever? And I'm like, ma'am, I apologize for the inconvenience. Do you mind waiting 20 minutes? After that 20 minutes, my mom's like, it's your turn. And she directed me to that person. So I'm just like, oh, no. Uh, I don't know what to do because she's just furious at me. You know, I, had, I, I didn't do anything to her. So I got her to a pedicure chair. And I'm like, hey, how are you doing? My name is Thomas. Still glared at me like this. She's like, I want a discount. I'm going to give you guys a terrible Yelp review. But I learned something important throughout that. Just by genuinely be, being a genuine person, you could change someone's perception easily. So what I did, I'm just like, hey, 
how's your family? How are you doing today? Well, what's your life like? And I actually cared for her that she wasn't angry anymore. Because by the end of the pedicure, we were engaged in a conversation, and I learned I could turn people's frown upside down just by being nice and showing that I cared about their life. So that was really important. And up next, my study abroad. Remember how I said I was shy? Well, I wanted to change that. To add to the story to my freshman year, I, I didn't like UIC at the end of it because I didn't have many friends. And I actually wanted to transfer schools, in fact, but I decided against it. My sophomore year, I joined a fraternity, Phi Kappa Psi, and it changed my life because there I was shy, but I met a lot of guys who supported me. Regardless of whatever I go through, they're always there for me, and that meant a lot. And that was the change of the shyness going away. And that following semester, I went to Sevilla, Spain. And over here is a picture of Plaza de España, which is in the Star Wars movie. That's because I wanted to take a leap of faith. I wanted to see the outcome of going somewhere and not knowing anyone. And keep in mind, a Spanish-speaking country. My Spanish was terrible. The first day I showed up, my host mom, she's like, Speaking rapid Spanish, I'm just like, hola, me llamo Thomas, and that's all I could say. So it was an interesting semester because I met a lot of people who came, were in my situation. They all had a host family, but they were welcoming, and I learned, you know, for once, I could be myself and make a lot of great friends. And I did. And then just this past semester, I went to Barcelona. Only this time, it wasn't like that. When I got there, I learned that a lot of the people were from, different school, from the same school, and they stayed in the apartments. So this time, people weren't staying at the homestay anymore. I was one of maybe five or 10 who had a homestay. So it's just hard to fit in because I tried to be myself, but it didn't work. I was never getting invited to things, and I was figuring, why, why is this happening? Like, I'm myself, do I need to change? And I told myself, no, always stay true to yourself. That's what I believe in. So one day, um, I had like two friends uh, that semester in my program. They went, out, they went away to Amsterdam, and I didn't want to go with them because I already went there. And then I'm like, I'm not going to stay here alone because, you know, I wanted to make new friends. So I went to a pub thinking that I would make friends alone, and I didn't. Sitting there like alone, I, I was feeling hopeless, just like, what, what's wrong with me? And then I went back. I'm like, I need to take another chance. So I booked a round trip to Dublin, out of the blue, not knowing anyone. And it was awesome, because the moment I got there, these people from London were like, hey, are you alone? I'm like, yeah, unfortunately, I am. But they're like, if you want to hang out with us, you're welcome to. And then for the first time like that semester, I was like, wow, there's some friendly people out there who can make a difference. So my point is, if you see someone who's alone, maybe say something to them. You could change their, their day. And with those people, I felt appreciated. And then going into the hostel, um, you know, I was expecting the same thing. But when I got there, there's this strange guy, and we just didn't fit in. He was this 40-year-old 40, 40 chef, and he didn't speak much English, but we just didn't connect. So I was like, uh-oh, am I going to be alone again? So I went downstairs. I'm like, hey, I want to go to the Cliffs of Mohair. And then in came these people, out of the blue, Americans. One kid's like, hey, nice hat. I had a Chicago Bulls hat. And they're like, are you from Chicago? I'm like, yes. Next question I asked, where did you guys study abroad? They said Sevilla. And that night, I hung out with them, a group of four people I didn't know, and they treated me very kindly. And like I said, that meant a lot because I was myself. And following that weekend, I went back to Sevilla, and guess who I met up with? Those same four people. From there, I met their friends and I fit in. And in fact, I still stay in touch with them today. The point of this story is, you know, sometimes it may not look right. And for me, it was that point in Barcelona, just feeling down. But I kept going with it because I knew that eventually I would find a group of friends who would support me. So next, oops. Next question is, I want to open this up to the audience again. How do you define passion? Come on. I want to hear some of your input. 
Yes, sir. It will be by about kids. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> that's true. Anyone else have any input on passion? You, sir? Yeah, that's right. And passion is the key to success because if you're doing something you don't like and you're not motivated, you should maybe consider a different route. You have the option to do whatever you want, but it's risky, right? So at the time, like I said, I didn't know what my passion was. And I learned that I was good at interacting with people and I wanted to do something to help people out. Another thing was that hopeless feeling that I had after getting turned down, I didn't want that to happen to anyone. So I had the idea of career podium because after doing so many pedicures, you learn so much about things. I was like, I could make a content-based website, organize it by industry, and allow, people, allow for other people to learn about what that person does, just to prepare them for the future. And, um, doing, and that started with career podium because it was kind of funny. Uh, I, I realized what I was passionate about, but um, I got the inspiration from Blake Mykoski, who's the founder of Tom's. And I'm sure many of you guys have seen the shoe, but that book really inspired me. Um, pretty much when he started his business, there weren't that many one for one, and everyone was against him. And he had an interesting path because he was a founder of a driver's ed company that did really well, but he's like, I'm not happy. So what he did, he took a trip to Argentina, he saw these kids, and they were getting shoes from people, and he participated, and then he saw a problem. The problem was, he was like, what happens when these kids outgrow their shoes? If you're like, I don't know. So from his experience, I learned you could do something you feel passionate about, and it's going to be successful, like Blake especially what he's doing today, going from shoes to eyewear to coffee. So that's like my motto with Career Podium. Ah. Hold on. Okay. Creation of Career Podium. This was May at the end of the semester. My buddy Israel, he, w he was at the rec center with me, and he's like, hey, I'm going to the entrepreneurship office. I'm going to talk to this advisor. I'm going to pitch this idea I have. And I'm like, OK, I'm going to go with you anyways, just to hear what you have. And then he pitched his idea, and I guess it was OK. But the guy's like, Thomas, uh, do you have any idea? And I was like, actually, I do. Like I was mentioning the passion. It just came together. This entrepreneurship just kind of happened without me ever wanting to be an entrepreneur. And it's been a really great path because in the beginning, like I said, it's a content-based website. I'm going to elaborate more on the lessons that I've learned as an entrepreneur, but first I'm going to tell you what we do today. Career Podium today is an interactive platform that connects young professionals to employers. Essentially, the purpose is to attract passionate candidates to employers, and we're set to launch next week. And it's really amazing to have this opportunity to give people the chance to get jobs that they didn't believe that they could get. And um, if you guys would like to support it, I really suggest that you guys follow our Facebook page because I think it's going to work out. Lessons about entrepreneurship. First lesson is 24-7. That's true. I mean, you have to make a lot of sacrifices if you want to start your own business. One thing I learned is nothing is given to you. And you have to be really devoted and sacrifice a lot of your free time. Like for me, this may not seem like a lot, but I wake up at 7, go to class, of course. I don't skip class. Um, but anytime I'm outside of class, I'm doing my entrepreneurship work, and I'm up till midnight. But I love it. I love just waking up every morning knowing that I can make a difference and feel good about myself. The second, finding the right teammate. A lot of people ask, how do you find a team of people to partner up with you if you don't have money? The answer is, it's kind of tough. I mean, you could find classmates who have a high GPA, but in business, sometimes that doesn't matter. In order to succeed and have a good teammate, you have to make sure that they're willing to go above and beyond and be there for you. And 
throughout my year, I've had a lot of experience with people, and sometimes it didn't work out. And that's where the gut feeling is important. I was always sugarcoating things. I was always like, hey, like, do you mind doing this? And they're like, sure, OK. And then I wait Friday. Like, where's this business plan? I thought you said you were going to do it. Still not there. So that gut feeling, very crucial. Next, your friends make a huge impact on who you are. You are who you are based on the people you surround yourself with. And that's something I gained through success.com with their blogs. I'm lucky that I could say my friends inspire me because when I surround myself by great people, it makes me want to work harder. That energy is contagious. And if I don't work hard, I just feel, I don't feel accomplished. Another thing is my friends, they're willing to give me feedback, good or bad, without sugarcoating it. And I appreciate it so much because it makes me a better person. The second part is my friend this week, study abroad, he's like, hey, Thomas, what's your address? I'm sending you a book. And that meant so much to me because he knew, he knew that it would make a difference. And just a little gesture like that helps me out a lot. Uh, next. The true meaning of no. So today, Career Podium, the Career Office supports us. We've been collaborating with them since the start of the spring semester. And we've had a lot of support with employers and it's been outstanding. But it wasn't always like that. You, you remember when I said we were a content-based website? That's when I had to reach out to people to interview them. And these interviews lasted an hour, and I had to edit them. But finding people to interview wasn't always easy, especially when you're trying to get on their time. So that was one. Next part, trying to get people to like our Facebook page. I was at Tendor's bar just trying to get people on a Thursday night. I thought it was a good idea to do a raffle. But I learned, don't go to a bar to promote, because those people aren't there to help you. They were, it was midnight, and those, there's a lot of funny stories, but it just didn't work out. They're like, no, what do you do? Like, I'm not going to like it. I'm like, ah, oh, OK. But this quote really means a lot. Push until something happens. Because like I said, you're not guaranteed anything, so you got to keep pushing. So yeah, and then, ah. Knowledge is power, right. With entrepreneurship, I have to read every day in order to learn. Not having the leadership experience sometimes holds me back, but to all the people who doubt me, I say, don't look at my, my history because it's not who I am anymore. And my resume back then, it screams, you're not going to succeed because I didn't have any leadership experience. I couldn't talk in front of a crowd, and I don't let that get to me. So books um, have made a difference. Second is going to keynote events is something I attend on a regular base, just so I can hear from professionals who have succeeded. I want to get there someday, but I know it's not going to be easy. And then networking. What is networking? Would you guys like to define it? Like, how would you define networking? Would anyone like to define networking? OK, anyways, networking, it's all right. I'm going to tell you. Networking is when you meet people and get in touch with them. And it's really powerful for a business. In order for your business to get exposure, you need people to back you up. There's so many entrepreneurs out there. Today, everyone thinks it's cool to start a business, but that work is true. And when you reach out to people without a reference, they're likely to ignore you. So what I do is I attend a lot of networking events every week, and I try to get in touch with people because I know that they can help me. But one important tip to know, you got to help them too. Even if it's a big CEO, you can't be like, hey, like for me, hey, my name is Thomas. Can I get in touch with you? It doesn't work like that. And that's something I learned in my mom's nail salon, interacting with people. And if you're ever at a networking event, try to get to know the person first before you ask something. So perhaps be like, hey, my name is Thomas. How are you doing at this event? Like, Get to know their personal life, because they're going to open up. And before you leave, Ask for, for their contact information. Be like, hey, I really appreciate you taking the time to get to know me.
can I follow up with you? More than likely, they're going to be like, yeah, sure. Here's my business card. Please remind me who you are in the email. And then the second part, make sure you follow up because after going to a networking event and if you're talking to a CEO of a big company, they get many emails. So to stand out, text them or email them right when you leave the event because it's going to be fresh in their mind when they see it and they're going to be like, okay, I'll talk to this person. Like, I want to help them. So with that, um, with that being said, when you get on the phone with them and meet with them, do your research because it makes them feel important. Truthfully, I think everyone walks around with a sign that says, make me feel important. It's invisible. Even CEOs want that information or recognition. So if you do that, chances are they'll be more than likely to help you. So my closing point is, what's stopping you from your dream? I mean, you have the opportunity to pursue whatever you want. So what's stopping you? And before I open the Q&A, and now I would like to hear from you guys for the Q&A. Does anyone have any questions on anything that I've gone through, career podium, or technical stuff? Yes, please go ahead. Have you heard of Toastmasters International? I you, think that would be a really good thing for you, especially with the leadership experience. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, last week in Arizona at a coffee shop, some guy told me about Toastmasters and having the opportunity to be rated. I, I'm definitely interested in that because um, I want to be even better. Thank you for the recommendation. Any other questions that you may be curious about? Yes. How different would career podium be from other websites doing the same Yeah, so what I realized is there aren't that many competitors out there who are helping young professionals. What we specialize in is transparency. When a user applies for a job, they're going to read a Career Insight article. So a Career Insight article is something that's like, what does the job entail? What kind of skill sets do you need to succeed? And it pretty much tells you, you know, what the actual job is. So before an employer can list a job, they have to answer the eight questions. And it's relevant to them because that's how it brings a passionate candidate. If you have a potential candidate who doesn't read your Career Insight, why should you hire them? I mean, this is funny, but it's kind of like a relationship, you know, with business. When you are applying for an employer, you're basically asking them to give you a chance. It's like asking someone else out. So that's why it's crucial. So yeah, the next, portion, the next step is answering the filter questions. That's three questions the employer set. So no longer do you have to write that cover letter and you're addressing it to someone who might not read it. It could be really long, be very time consuming. But if you know what they're asking you, it saves you a lot of time and it saves the employer's time too because they can get what they want out of you without reading all those words on the cover letter. And then the third process, you could follow your, proce your progress. Um, the moment you indicate your interests, you're going to see when the employer views your profile on our platform so you know if they're interested. They're also going to have 30 days to accept or decline your job interest. And if they accept your job interest, you know there's mutual benefit, and you can message them. Through messaging, the employer can ask you any question that they're curious about, but A, they're gonna know who you are through your profile, B, the cover letter question. Obviously, if they accept you, they have an interest in you, so you can kind of show them why you'd be a good candidate. Any other questions that anyone has? Yes, sir. So you said that you're, you're pretty shy. You feel, you feel pretty confident. Thank what, you. What's changed? Honestly, like, just putting myself out there, I don't know if you can tell, but this is my first time being on a stage. I've never been on a stage before, so this is my first time public speaking. I just had to put myself out there. If I made a mistake, it's okay, because I'm going to go back, I'm going to watch the video, I'm going to take notes just to improve, because I know I can succeed. So that's how, just taking a chance. Yeah. Anyone else? You, Nathan. How do you find yourself telling your stress before your lunch next week? Well, I'm sorry, I didn't hear you. How do you how do you handle your stress on your way to your success? Stress? Yes. How do I handle stress? Well, my friends, um, I always call them for input. 
because there are some stressful days with entrepreneurship. You wake up and you can get some bad news, such as legality, something I didn't know about, but my old company, I can't see the name anymore, but there's some trademark infringement. And I was studying abroad. I got a letter that says, hey, like, we don't like your name. You need to change it. And it was 10 pages. And that was stressful. I didn't go out that night because I was like, ah, oh, got to gotta focus. So stress-wise, I work, I work out every morning just so I ha could have energy. That's how. Any other questions that I can answer? How do you balance schoolwork or career polio? Ooh, that's a tough one. My teachers probably should not hear this answer, but uh, I network, so like um, I make sure I see what people are doing in class, and I get their notes because um, I'm really passionate about career podium, and I realize time is very valuable. But at the same time, uh, with school, obviously I'm gonna pass and get my degree because my mom seriously she would kill me if I didn't. I told her like, mom, like, would you be upset if I didn't if I didn't graduate? She's like, yeah, like, yeah, I would be upset. And I'm just like. Fine. So like one story is I had a 10 page essay due um, two weeks ago and it was like midnight and that's when I started. And then during that night I realized I had a coffee chat with, pe with someone at 7 a.m. and it was like 5 a.m. So I just try to power through as much as I can making sure I don't fail of course and just hoping everything will be okay. Yeah. Yes. Not yet. Right now we're focused on getting our platform to be ready for users. Once we launch in April, we're going to seek feedback from both employers and user. And I forgot to mention this, but sometime in April, we have a keynote here in the Illinois room where we're going to demonstrate the product at the end of the night, as well as unveiling all the employers on our platform. Because once we unveil it, users will be able to reach out to employees for entry level positions and internships. And currently we have about five verbal commitment at this moment. So I hope that answers your question. Any other questions I may answer? Okay, well, thank you so much for taking the time to come out. I hope you guys enjoy this. <laughs>